You're coming too. What started as a dream is now our reality. Six years ago, we poured her ballast, raised every frame, cut every plank, and named her Red Aviva. Ready for life back on the ocean, this year we're determined yeah. to set sail. Did you look at that? I'd say that's the making of a fine cruising vessel. <laughs> We're Salt and Tar, and this is our life. We're happy to share, and thanks for joining us. We first launched Red Aviva in November 2018. Then July the following year, we hauled her out for some remaining major projects we didn't want to do in a residential area. Four months later, splashed again. So this is her second haul out but her first routine one. And this is our final full day. Day three. What'd you guys pull out for? Just bottom paint and top okay. side paint again. Uh, yeah, sort of the annual deal, but we're going back in on Monday. So right. we Thanks. just bust it out real quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Weekend special. Exactly. <laughs> Is all the taping done, you think? Uh, yep. Okay. Unless you need to tape anything in the bow. I didn't... I just did back here. So, I think you should cut in everything. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm gonna hit that red spot real quick with the bottom paint, just so we can take that tape off. Sounds good. And that red paint's so fresh, if we leave it on there too long, it'll just peel it. Peel the red paint off. Okay. I just have to remember that you've painted on this side. <laughs> As Garrett tackles below the waterline, I focus above, and before my finished coat of red, I touch up the black on all our hardware. So Garrett's doing all the little bits of bottom paint and the bottom of the keel. And it's Sunday, so the yard guys aren't here, so we can't move the stands, but maybe they can just put us in the truck and then we can do it real quick um, in the morning. And I've got one coat all the way around the top side left to do. Now that the day is kind of warming up, Garrett's gonna roll on some teak oil on the stuff that he sanded up top. And I I think that's mainly all of our things. You put a new nut on the prop shaft. Oh yeah, new nut on the prop shaft. Because that's looking pretty, <laughs> pretty <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> well see, Garrett said he found the one that we lost, which is why we had the less awesome nut on the end there. But yeah, the thing is, can we refind it? Yeah, I only intended for that one to be on for a year until our next haul out. Our annual haul out is also to check for any surprises. And we did find our prop was hot. Electrically, that is. I don't know what grade this nut is. I just found it in a box randomly. Oh. So it could just be like crappy or a lower grade. But still, it, sh there's, it should not be that eaten after just a year. Yeah, just and a that, year and a half. That big donut zinc that we had. Yeah. The rest of our zincs are fine. So it's probably from our own power because everything's grounded to the engine. So, gonna have to read some books. <laughs> and so we'll have a zinc to replace here, but all of the like kind of brick zincs are still 100% intact and fine doing their job. And then we'll probably grease up the pintles and gudgeons a little bit more. Uh, I gotta figure out a solution to the uh, electrolysis issue with our, our 12 volt system is uh, grounded on the motor. Maybe next haul out we'll put a grounding plate in or something, I don't know. 
figure that out later. For now, I'll just put a gigantic zinc on it and then maybe when we're, when we're not moving, we'll just put a zinc on a cable and hang it over the side and attach it to the prop shaft. Electrolysis is like a type of boat cancer. And like sunscreen for skin cancer, correctly placed and sized zincs are your best preventative maintenance. Salt water is a fantastic conductor for stray electrical currents from the dock, other boats, or your own. Zinc acts as a sacrificial anode as it's a less noble metal and will deteriorate first. So more zincs and research, the next haul out, a solution. Did you find your new nut yet? Uh, yes, I found, I found the, well, the old one that I lost and oh, then okay. I lost again, then I found it again. Okay. <laughs> on the port side and that'll be my last last run of red paint so I'm trying to finish this out pretty quick before again Garrett finishes what he's doing so then hopefully we can uh, still have some time before we run out of daylight today to get in the port mizzen chain plates since the boats out of the water will be nice and easy Okay, so aft one first. Uh, yeah, hold it top and bottom and I'll drill through like maybe like the second one down. Okay. Thank you. I swear the later in the day, the harder it is uh, to crawl back here. Ready? Okay, drilling. Okay, do you want me to put the lock washer on now? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so let's start at the bottom. Okay. Okay, hold. Let's go up to the top. Yeah, let's let's just let it chill out here for a while because this butyl tape is really cold, so it's pretty stiff. All right, forward one. This is our final chain plate. We can wash our hands of this. Okay, finally, it's coming through. all the energy I have for today. So Garrett's gonna try and make the thinnest of the thinnest little washer. Yeah, this didn't fit quite snug up against the prop, which probably isn't a big deal and I was just gonna leave it, but then of course, I kept thinking about it while I was trying to sleep last night and figured I've got this thin sheet copper so I'm just going to make this tiny, tiny little like, kind of washer just so it fits nice and snug. <laughs> Probably doesn't make any difference but you know. Kind of weird. Peace of mind. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to do the underside of the keel here and while we're waiting for the yard guys to kind of trickle in for the day then we're going to have a move the boat stands and I'll get under there too and that's pretty much it we're ready after that and if I have a little bit of time I'm gonna try and cut the butyl tape on the mizzen chain plates that we got in last night and uh, paint them red if I can if not I can do that in the water so it's not not absolutely necessary Piece. Perfect. Size. So I'm partially through cutting that, but the trailer's here. This was such a good push for us. We haven't really stopped actually. We're on track for sea trialing in the fall. We feel confident to say we're in that last 10% of the build. To sailing, that is. Now, to completion, that's another story. But getting unplugged from the dock and life back on the hook, we're so close. One massive push over these next few months and we'll be there. squares where the boat stands were. I even got to painting the red on the port side mizzen chain plates.
it goes down below to check the bilge. Good? Good. He's like trying to run but can't. <laughs> <laughs> Keys are in this pocket. We'll get her stern kind of out past the dock a little bit, and then you'll hop on board. Okay. You'll kick her bow and hop on, and then you'll fit if we need to. You want you to keep her uh, nose in like this, or let her drift a bit? I got ethylene glycol poisoning once. Don't look at that. <laughs> Do you have uh, your camera going? Do now. Um. Don't drink the bilge water swab. 